The College Football Experience 2024 Futures Bombs Down Under episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pickup for a chance to win 100 times the amount of money you can enter in college football, NBA, MLB, ULF, NHL, golf, and much, much more. Sign up today using the promo code TCESGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by A V O. Yes, the premier arbitrage sports betting tool. That is A V O. Use their tool to bet both sides and lock in a profit. Access their platform for free at arbsversodds.com. That's A R B S versus odds.com. Plus, in honor of Masters Week, the Golf Gambling Podcast guys are giving away a tailor made Spider X putter for free. Enter at sports gambling podcast.com slash masters at sports gambling podcast.com slash masters. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circa Las Vegas. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes, it is that time. It's April 11th that we're talking about that. Yes, we never stop on the college football experience. Get on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button because we never stop talking college football. Um, if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, my name is Colby Swigger, database dad, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet speaks with his fists and lives by his wits when Dundee happened he was a superstar because I understand how the bastard thinks I taught him now I own one we got a 12 team playoff this year invitational playoff but I mean we got a 12 team invitational playoff and the odds are juicy. I see opportunity out there in these college football streets. I am joined by my co-host. He is the host of the Bottom Line Bombs podcast, um, which you should be subscribed to. They call him the man in the box. Also better known as the bet detective. Give it up for CJ Sullivan. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are we doing? Can't wait to get into it. The all 22 screen spring scrimmages, stadium talking, conference future, and bomb dropping. <laughs> and 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 look, we're we're diving into college football on April 11th. I mean, we're, mm-hmm. we've been talking it all off season. Check out the college football experience. We've gone through every team schedule, but um, you know, we, and this is part of the C block. Bottom yep. line bombs goes right yep. into this. Then this goes right into the UFL gambling podcast. So as, as, dude, if you're on YouTube, I, I've already fixed it for you. It's going to go right into the UFL gambling podcast in about an hour here. But um, I wanted to talk about the market uh, for college football and get in this episode because a, okay. this year we have the 12 team playoff. So playoff odds are a little bit different than they've ever looked. Um, but also there's some juicy conference odds. All the schedules are, are finalized. So, I mean, they might move a day or two like the, the, but the, the opponent is finalized. So um, we got everything there and I think it's always good. And I know Patty C touched on this on last night's college football show. when We broke down week zero and week one, but Mm. a perfect example is a couple of years ago, Virginia tech hosted Ohio state. And uh, they had beaten Ohio State the 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 year before, and I, ironically, Ohio State had won the national championship that year. But um, the look ahead line was like twenty one points, hmm. and now I know that was a ga- specific game. But um, by the time that thing closed on Labor Day weekend, it was down to nine and a half, ten. So a, a lot of value can always be found. Louisville last year, I took Louisville to to, uh, to win the ACC. 
they got to the ACC championship, but I had just unbelievable odds. And by the time the season started, the odds had gone way the fuck down. So there's a lot of, you know, value in this episode, in my opinion, in this time of year, yes, we are bringing value in this episode. Welcome to everyone in C block who's popping in came in here from the bombs here for the value episode. Yes. Yeah, value I mean, city right yeah, here. Value city. Take everything off the shelves because <laughs> pile it up because there's value city. We'll, we'll worry about it later. <laughs> yeah, what do they have up in Pittsburgh? Where you were Gabriel's and then they have a place called Gabriel's is like a Ross, you know, <laughs> there's fucking value here. Value. Um, we can always return something if we don't like it later, but we get it now. Well, get the value pile up the cart. I don't know. Gabriel. I don't know if you can return at Gabriel's. Uh, that, Not but, Gabriel's. No, yeah, but, yeah, you know. but <laughs> here, here you're good. Um, if you even look at it at Gabriel's, you bought it. That's it. <laughs> uh, buddy, hey, how do you feel about this 12 team playoff? Are you excited? We got home campuses for the first round. You know, I just I picture. You pissed drunk in state college or the pit Panthers back when they had, you know, back in 20 years ago when you were, yeah. you were, uh, you know, I, chugging beers there with the Dukes. Duquesne, um, Duquesne, Duke side note, by the way, since this is a college show, even though it's not uh, basketball, we already wrapped up. Bronny James is the second favorite five to one to go to Duquesne university for his next school. Oh, so you, you get you already got the jersey I take. Bring the social, bring out, bring the clout to the hills there. Duquesne, bring the pain. Um, he, first we had LeBron had to make his decision. He brought us talents to South Beach, and now Bronny also has to make his decision. Very life changing. <laughs> and bring his talent to the Palumbo Center. <laughs> well, <laughs> wait, you you have a brand new coach. I wonder if he'll right. sound like John Calipari at his press conference and. Uh, and you know what? I'm jacked about another opportunity. Like, I'm like, let's go. Now, I met with the team. There is no team. <laughs> wait, wait. So that means you didn't meet with anybody, right? No, what does that even mean? He said there was three guys, but they're all in the portal. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's my new favorite clip. Yeah, I met with the team. The guy, uh, I'm really excited. I met with the team. There is no team. <laughs> it is the same situation at 2K with the brand new head coach. Welcome to college sports in 2024, where yeah. everybody is in the portal. It's Bronny and a social media team. That's our team. That's the new Dukes. That's your 2024, 25 Dukes. <laughs> um, yeah, that's going to be fascinating to watch. See if he goes to Pittsburgh to play for the Dukes. Dukes also in football made the FCS playoffs a year ago. Sure uh, did. Folks, you know, subscribe to the FCS college football experience as well. But yeah, how do you feel about this 12 team playoff in general? I like it. No, I mean, it, it needs expanded. I mean, four teams isn't a playoff. We know that. You know, it's like, uh, it should be more, to be honest with you. It should be just like the way double A does it or FCS, yeah. as you should say. Or, or yes. D2 or D3. Yeah, right. Yeah. As Lee yeah. said, yeah. Every it's other like, form or high school. All right. right. Or Pop Warner. <laughs> um, or the Absolutely. NFL. Pop Warner was definitely more uh, <laughs> more fair. It's just insane. Yeah, it should be 16. But um, they saved that for the conferences like the Big Ten with 16 teams. <laughs> My God. What? <laughs> <laughs> so many fucking teeth. Look at his ACC. Uh, ACC's oh. got fucking San Francisco's in the market <laughs> now. They got, they got Berkeley and Palo Alto. They got the, the George Bush blood money down there in Texas. Just this uh, whole SMU. It's just bonkers. This next, uh, this college football season is going to be pretty fucking crazy. So I, I let's start off with those conferences. Let's start Value off with those conferences. city. Let's do it. The ACC, you know, Florida State's the odds on favorite, plus 275. Mm -hmm. Clemson's plus 280. Miami's plus 450. Uh, yep. Louisville plus 500. NC State plus 1100. And uh, Virginia Tech plus 1800, which I actually think, I know Kramer's in the other room, so don't say it too loud. I, when you look at the Hokies' schedule, I think it's a great path for them to potentially. They kind of have like, the, you know, I, the reason why I took Louisville last year to get to the ACC championship was. The schedule. It had nothing to do with yeah. the roster. I just thought, well, they got a decent coach and the schedule breaks for them. Mm -hmm. 
Virginia Tech, I think, has that schedule this year. So plus eighteen hundred on the Hokies, I think, is is a valuable grab right now. And, and uh, folks, if you if you it's already want- crashing down, Battle Lines got about twelve to one, and I mean, of course, they got the Heisman winner, Kyron Drones, on there. Uh, drone strikes, these drone strikes. But uh, mm-hmm. no, my, my point that I want want to make here is is the non-con. Now they don't have an FCS, but they have Vanderbilt, Marshall, Old Dominion, Rutgers, all winnable games. Yeah. Right now, now they could lose. They, they, all those, if even if they went zero and four, you're fine because this is an ACC bet here. So their ACC games at Miami, so their road games are at Miami, at Stanford, at Syracuse, at Duke. Guess what? All four don't do. They don't, don't pack do. their stadiums. Yeah. <laughs> None of those stadiums are rocking. Um, they they get Clemson, but they get Clemson. At Lane Stadium on November 9th. Blacksburg can be cold as fuck in November. Um, mm-hmm. Then they don't play Florida State. They don't play North Carolina. They don't uh, like to me. It's a favorable schedule, man. Like they don't. They don't even get Notre Dame on the draw because you know a lot of the ACC teams will play Notre Dame uh, based on that deal that they have. Um, they don't play NC State. Like all the teams that are ahead of them in the odds. Louisville's not on there. They're not on there except Clemson. Clemson and Miami are the only ones that, and Miami. Come on. I mean, we cashed on on fading Mario Cristobal last year. And they're always a mess. That's not always that, a mess. Yeah. So uh, you can't put any weight into that Miami game. But even if they lose that Miami game, let's say they lose to the two teams that were favored higher than them, Clemson and Miami. Okay. They're still gonna make the ACC tournament, I think. Or not the, the tournament, the championship. Um because everyone else has harder schedules above them. So it's almost exactly like Louisville scenario last year where the schedule breaks perfectly for them. I like it. Uh, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm big on the drone strike this year. I got them on like 200 to one to win the Heisman bunch of tickets like that until they t- maxed out till the kiosk Look, ran out of paper. They returned um, their entire offense. So the yeah. offense should get better. The defense wasn't bad last year. So I, I just think it's worth the sprinkle. Um, and it's that brand new ACC. And that's another thing that I want to highlight. Not only did like with me taking Louisville last year, you just touched on it with these conferences. The ACC now has 17 teams with a fringe 18th one because Notre Dame plays like seven teams or eight teams in the, in, in the ACC. I think it's yeah. seven. How many teams are so Notre Dame is officially not in the ACC, not right? in, but they have this deal where they play seven games, Ugh. right? And then you have the streaming S- service deal. How many teams are currently <laughs> suing the ACC? <laughs> uh, as far as I know, right now, just Florida State and Clemson, but okay. uh, my, Miami could two. join any day. Yeah. Um, the SEC has 16, the Big 12 has 18, the Big 10 has 16. Mm. <laughs> I know. Why even have the numbers in there anymore? Look well, my, my point show. is, my point that I'm trying to make is that. The sked the, the problem when you have these that big of leagues, you're not gonna get the best two teams in the championship game. Right. Because you're gonna get whoever had the nicest schedule. You saw this with Louisville last year. Louisville was not the second best team in the ACC. That was only on a 14 team. Yeah. Right? Now you're at 17. Right? So the, there's gonna be teams. The irony is they thought by condensing by grabbing these gi- making these gigantic conferences, I think it actually is gonna hurt. The value of the teams making the auto bids, the value for them, but not the value for us. Yes, exactly. Value, value city episode, spatula city, go down there and uh, pile up the shopping cart. Um, any other, any other teams in this conference you like here? I, I mean, I like, I like, uh, I like what you're saying. I'm all over to Virginia tech. It's cr- crashing down. Um, what about SMU coming into this conference? Uh, you know, they're an interesting one because they spend, my only problem is, is, I'm not sold on the staff yet. I, I, I know they had a good year last year, but they had a very favorable schedule within the ACC. Yeah. So uh, I'm sorry with, within the AAC and now AAC, them jumping right. up to the ACC um, the letter out. Well, like to give you an example, like the, like their first two conference games are home to Florida state and at Louisville. Hmm. Okay. That's tough. Then you get a bye week. You're at Stanford, at Duke, home to Pitt. I do think Pitt's going to be better this year. So they don't play Clemson. You got to like that. I mean, it's not that if they can, 
I think that if they can go one and one in that stretch, home to Florida State and at Louisville, I think they got a real chance. The problem is, is can they can they do that? Because it, they're getting Florida State a week after their rivalry game, the battle for the iron skillet against TCU, which is a non-con game, but it's a nice spot for Florida state to catch them. Uh, Cause there's a lot of animosity in that yeah. SMU and TCU game. But if they could go one and one in that stretch, you know, Duke's breaking in a brand new head coach. It is a nice schedule towards the backside of this. That's so what I, I mean, it's a yeah. nice schedule, and they're bringing that Texas criminal ball out to this conference. You know, it's a whole different. You know, it's a different clash of cultures down there. And I think they might they might show them what what real illegal under the table football is. Hey, back to Dickerson and Craig James, mm-hmm. the Pope Express, Jerry Ball was a defensive tackle, Michael Carter. Um, yeah, because you know they'll load up. That's all they do is reload with the buy themselves a squad. Oh, I, they went all in on sports. They just bought USC's basketball coach. That was wild. They yeah. fired a coach that uh, in their second year that went to won twenty games. They've only won like twenty games like five <laughs> times in the past twenty years. They're like, yeah, you're fired. We want someone better. Uh, they are going. They're putting all their chips in, and I can dig it. But you know, I don't think it's a bad sprinkle. Actually, the more I look at the schedule, yeah, they just have to to me. Even if they lose to Florida State and Louisville. It just gives them no room for air after that. Mm. But I don't know if there is real room for air. Like at Stanford, at Duke, home to Pitt, bye week, home to BC, at Virginia, home to Cal. They could win all those. Absolutely. All those. I'd rather take them than like, you know, like a North Carolina or anything like that. You know, I agree. I, mean? I agree. You know? I, th- I thought Carolina had a tough schedule. I could, really, I, I think you just solidified my two plays, Virginia Tech and SMU, because. Cal is an interesting one because I do think the PAC 12 was a lot better than the ACC last year. Yeah. So it's like, how will Cal do? Because like they were a bowl team in the PAC 12. So it's like, are they going to see, but they still, they have a harder schedule because they have Florida state, Miami, uh, NC state at Pitt on that schedule at SMU. I think they have, I, yeah, I'm with you. I think that the two to play are SMU plus 1800. Virginia Tech plus eighteen hundred, same odds for uh, at DK right now. Yeah, I love it. So there's that. You want to add anything else in the ACC? No, that's I mean, the thing. It's almost like the Masters. You you play too many, and next year you get everyone. These conferences are so big. I can I can play. I can make a case for like six or seven of these teams. Then I'm yeah. like, well, now now I need them to change the rules where everyone ties for first place here or something, and they, just to, just to get even. Um, no, I like I like those. Those are two solid plays right there. Eighteen to one each. Yeah, yeah, and shout out to Vinny Elliott says I finally got a chance to catch a live stream. Ohio State plus four eighty is pretty solid. I got Missouri plus six thousand a month ago. They got a ton of teleback to to mm. what to win the conference or make the playoff. Like oh, because it's to win the conference. I think well, the Ohio State one is that's a great number because they're like even money now, aren't they? Ohio State. I think. So. I mean, well, especially after Harbaugh left. So I think with Harbaugh and that whole Michigan team leaving, that one is the one that is uh you know, super surprising to me is, is I I don't like, there's no way that Ohio state a is not in the playoffs. I know their odds are horrible. Mm -hmm. They're in the playoffs to me. And they are also in the big 10 championship game. Like there's no, like their schedule, their non-con is a fucking joke, man. Mm. Look at their non-con and tell me that they're not playing for the, for the big 10 championship. So what do you see the odds at right now over there for, for you, CJ on Ohio state to win the big 10? Big Ten Conference Championship. Uh, we got to look at Ohio State plus one twenty five at Bet Online right now as we speak. I still think you do it because there's no way. First off, for them to win to to get to the playoffs, I think I just saw the odds are actually horrible yeah. for them to get to the playoffs. Like it's uh, now, are they do, are they doing away with the championship games? Is that what's going no, on? No, no, they not. still have the championship game, but Ohio you pencil Ohio State in, all right? Because I went through all their schedules, and to me. They have by far the easiest schedule in the entire Big Ten. Mm. They are minus six hundred to make the playoffs. Wow! So there's no value in that anymore. But uh, to win the Big Ten, short of a trip to you, like they got to go to Eugene and they got to go to State College. And I know you could say, well, they could lose both those. They also host Michigan, but Michigan is going to look a lot different this year to me. Yeah, for um, sure. So I think that Michigan games a win. Remember, Chip Kelly came over, left UCLA as a head coach to be OC at Ohio State. They killed it in the portal. Like uh, brought in studs all over, you know, 
at Oregon and at Penn State, I think there's no way they lose both. I think you're looking at a team that goes eleven and one. Now is Oregon? I see them. Oregon's the second favorite at uh, plus two twenty five. Um, did they, they play? Did they play on start, starting Dante Moore, the UCLA quarterback? The no, they brought in Dylan there? Gabriel. who's like in his thirtieth oh, right. year. Yeah, Dylan um, Gabriel. My uh, thing with with Oregon, and they could, but they that schedule's still tricky to me because, like, yes, the UCLA game. I thought that was when they, you know, when I broke down the schedule originally. Chip Kelly mm-hmm. was still the head coach at UCLA, All right. so I thought that game was sneaky. Now that looks like an auto win, uh, but they're home to Ohio State on October twelfth. They're at Michigan on November second. See, they're still they could lose that game to me. They're at Wisconsin November sixteenth. They could lose that game to me. And then Washington on November 30th. See Washington. I, I expect a ton of regression from Washington, but when you're playing them the final week of the year, that first year coach is going to be, it's pretty much, he's like in year two by November 30th. So I, I do think you're getting the, the best Washington team you'll get all year. It's still favorable though. And what would you say those odds were for who's that? The ducks, the ducks are second favorite or plus two twenty five to win a big 10. Um, Washington is at 50 to one. Did you see them try to gorilla interview gorilla uh, question him the, uh, about having his <laughs> about playing those guys who were got some minor, minor dust up rape charges on them, you know, in the bowl game. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, you played him afterwards. Whoa, whoa. That wasn't me. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, I just got here. I don't know anything about that. I mean, yeah, we looked it up. <laughs> he's, he did some raping and uh, we suspended him. What do you want us to do? That's the old coach. Yeah. Give a fucking, Give a call to Alabama if you want to hear. Well, that. And why do you think Alabama hired him? They're like, I like what you did there. Yeah, you know what <laughs> I mean. That's very SEC of you. Yes. You, you, we like what you did there. Um, and if there's heat coming, you get the fuck out of Dodge. That's what you do, and you head down, 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 down <laughs> Alabama. Yeah, um, I, I do think though that Oregon. Uh, I mean, this is going to go chalk. I think. Yeah, for Oregon sure. probably has the second easiest schedule. Um. I wonder, you know, the team, I think Ohio state's going to be 11 and one. I yeah. wonder the team, what the, the, whoever they face in the big 10 championship, I wonder if they'll have two, if they'll have three losses, that's, what's going to be this new day and age with all these teams in the, in these, uh, there's more by condensing a whole conference, taking, you know, the best of the AAC right, and, and the entire pac 12 and splitting it off into a bunch of different conferences all and, and the big 12s two, uh, you know, historic programs, I would say joining the sec, you now have like this, like crazy scheduling where you got to ask yourself, can Oregon really like Oregon? I, I actually think the PAC 12 was better than the big 10 this year. Mm-hmm. Like last year's PAC 12, I think is better than this year's big 10, but at the same time, you definitely have some big time fucking matchups here. Like Ohio state at Michigan at Wisconsin home to Washington. I don't know how that would compare to at USC, you know, home to Washington. I guess you still got Washington on the schedule. You don't have USC on the schedule, which was, you know, if, I feel like you almost played every PAC 12 team. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, some of the other good teams in the conference, Oregon state was really good. They're still on the schedule, but they're clearly their whole team is gone. And, yep. uh, and, and some of the other teams that were very good in the uh, like UCLA with chip Kelly and stuff like that. It's going to be interesting to see because I, I do think uh, I don't think there's a lot of value in the Big Ten. I, I'll take some of that plus to, that that plus action on Ohio State because I don't I don't see how they're not in the in the Big Ten championship. You right. for sure. Well, I mean, if I like I like to look at some dog like throw some darts in here. You got some big numbers. I'm not going to make a case for UCLA, but that is a little disrespectful to Deshaun Foster. That's for sure. I'd have him at a hundred to one for crying out loud. And I do like, I do like them doing that side move of getting Eric the and not making him a head coach, just to get him angry to scream at these <laughs> fucking kids. <laughs> well, I mean, what does he have? to make him make an offensive coordinator is just absolutely hilarious. Um, but looking at it like, like the way you do like to attack it with soft schedules. Now they do have to play at Ohio state. October 26. And that's now we have a problem. But other than that, a pretty nice, easy schedule set up is for Nebraska. I'm sitting oh. at 50 to one. You know, I this, a, I, a I love this schedule. Now the problem is, is they're going to be starting a true freshman quarterback, but their running back situation isn't all that much better either. Number one recruit confusion. in the nation, Dylan right. Riola. But um, 
the, this schedule is not going to get much easier for you, Nebraska. That's what I'm saying. And you got Matt. I trust in Matt Rule. I mean, they don't. They open up uh, what, what five straight home games for crying out loud, or four yeah. straight home UTEP, games. UTEP, Colorado, Northern Iowa, Illinois, Illinois, then at Purdue, and then home to Rutgers. I mean, Jesus. Sort of what Colorado, I guess, would be the hardest game there. It's a rivalry game, but Colorado is not just a rivalry game. That's a revenge game from last year true. too. That's I true. Mean, when, they, when they made up stories about Matt Rule kicking people out of prayer circles and shit. <laughs> <laughs> But dude, I mean, like, who cares about the Colorado game? Because that doesn't have that doesn't matter about the big the Big Ten championship. Right. And they beat Illinois at Purdue, home to Rutgers. I think they will. Right, maybe home Rutgers, Rutgers then at Indiana, and their first real game of the season, other than that, is, is the Ohio State game. So they'll be prepared for it. And at then U- UCLA and Lincoln, they can win that. And then, of course, now well, at USC a is a little tough. The, actually, the, the final three games might be a little tough. <laughs> at USC. Home versus Wisconsin at Iowa, right? You're not, they're not sweeping that board for sure. But I'm just saying, at fifty to one, you're going to you're going to they're going to start off hot. At the what, very what least. game won't they be favored in? Like the Ohio State game. Right. That's it. That's uh, what I'm saying. So at the very least, you might not at the very least, but best case scenario, you got an undefeated Nebraska team going into the Ohio State game. October 16th, 26th or whatever it is with a uh, 50 to one ticket in your pocket. Yeah. And, and they won't but be favored. Be 50 to one then. It'll be off closing line. CLV. For that so, Oscars. so, so what we're saying is they will be favored in every game. Yeah. Except the Ohio state until the final three games, the final That's three right. games at USC home to Wisconsin at Iowa. I imagine there'll be dogs at USC and at Iowa, but yeah. I mean, those Iowa games are always wacky. They could win that. You know what I mean? 10, nine, something like oh, that. Absolutely. They can beat Iowa and they can end up, you know what? They, I think they're a better team than Wisconsin, to be honest with you. I, I did. I mean, I, I actually am pretty terrified of a freshman quarterback against Iowa's defense, but um, you will be a freshman by then. Yeah. Except Thanksgiving. You get them five. I like it. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's sprinkle a few for. shillings on, yeah. uh, <laughs> on, on, uh, on the corn huskers here. Uh, we're going to talk a few other conferences, folks. But before we do that, I want to tell you that the college football experience is brought to you by, uh, well, first, the Golf Gambling Podcast. Subscribe to those guys. They're giving away a tailor made Spider X putter for free. SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash masters. All you have to do to enter is to go there. And you got you better do it before the masters start, though. Um, we're also brought to you by underdog fantasy. Underdog fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the <laughs> industry. Pick whether your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. You can win a hundred times the amount of money you enter in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build a pick them entry. The more players you add, the uh, higher the odds go. They do have college football when college football season comes back around, but right now you can do UFL NHL NBA, MLB, all that good stuff. Sign up today with the promo code TCE SGPN. You get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pickup special. Once again, visit underdogfantasy.com. Find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with the promo code TCE SGPN. You get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pickup special. All right. Just to, just to, just to clarify a little bit, it's you have until the masters ends to get that putter. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I, did I fuck that up? I did. You said, you said beginning, which happened this morning. So that's what I just want to clarify. You, you're oh. still eligible. Go to sports podcast.com backslash golf gambling, whatever the fuck it is. And get that. And you can still enter the, uh, to get your, uh, Taylor Swift putter. You can tell I love golf. Um, I, know, I called it a yeah. Taylor Swift putter during my show earlier today. It's, 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 it's not a tailor. It's tailor made. Uh, spider putter. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell, you can tell I love golf though, because I mean, I had no yeah. idea. And uh, the master started, right? I, I, I had it on ESPN for a second and it was all OJ Simpson content. So I was like, I'm out. I'm out. OJ Simpson, RIP to Norberg, naked gun. What was now, the best uh, one? One, two, or three? You mean two, two and a half? What is it? Three, 33 and a third? <laughs> <laughs> two and a half? He had a pretty fire acting career. I also, he was in like, a murder mystery movie in the late seventies, early eighties that I'm drawing a blank oh, yeah, on. Oh right yeah, not just the Hertz commercials. They, yeah, uh, he was in those Jim Brown movies too. Okay, I, you know, I, I'm going to go ball. ahead and say he might have had the best acting career of all time when you think about it. Of all time, of even not even an athlete, just about any actor in general. Well, I mean, that, well, because every actor gives you lemons. I don't know if OJ gave us gave us many lemons. You know yeah, what he, I mean? He didn't. He didn't miss too many times for sure. I, I, I've been wondering why his acting career kind of. <laughs> what, yeah, like he had the decency to stop while he was on top. Now, a lot of actors don't have that. That's true. He got out. Ray knew he knew when the writing was on the wall. 
Right, and it was in blood. Now, a lot of people can't separate the art from the artist, Colby. Um, I can. I watched Naked Gun the other day, and I still laughed at uh, all of OJ's parts when he does the flipping to go down there, even though, even though I know at one point he did steal sports memorabilia from a casino in uh, Las Vegas from some guys. He got his jerseys back there, even though he did that and served. He served his time. Let well, not only stole. I thought. I thought that he was part of uh, a kidnapping. <laughs> They they trumped up the charges, sure. <laughs> all, all, but, uh, all he did was they called it kidnapping. All he did was they had he set his up, Heisman trophy. I mean, they had yeah, they had his jerseys and stuff. So he set up a plot. Hey, I want to buy these stuff because sell buy it back, and they just grabbed it back from him. And because they locked the door, they called it kidnapping. He got really screwed on that one. It's just, it's like they had it out for him. What, what did he ever do? What did the Jews ever do? That's what I'm saying. You would think his if he had a good lawyer, he would have they would have shown him the naked gun. You ever right see before <laughs> shown the. Yeah. Jury naked gun. What, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say, well, that judge, if you ever see a thing on that trial, that ju ju judge didn't give a fuck what she was like drinking a Slurpee that was a big gulp or something, <laughs> like in the trial one day. She's like, Yeah, you're going to jail. Just mic'd up like, uh, yeah, yeah, mic'd up <laughs> drinking a fucking big gulp. She's like, I don't give a fuck what you say. You're going to jail <laughs> just for being dumb enough to get arrested again. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Uh, that is funny. Um, all right. Well, look, I want to touch on a couple more conference ones before, uh, sure, let's do before, it. um, because, uh, the big 12 is one that I think is one of the most interesting, like, I, mm. dude, do you have any idea who the fuck is going to the big 12 championship? You I'm, just take a dart and throw it at the fucking big 12 map. You know what I, I mean? Like, I, I, I wish it was a better price, but I really like Kansas to coming out of big 12, um, at six one, but you're right. It could be any one of these fucking teams. I, mean, I can make an argument for all these teams, dude. Every game, I was like looking through, and like even like your shitty teams, like okay, Houston. We knew they were going to fire Holgerson last year. Yeah, I think Willie Fritz, and because of the transfer portal the, the, these days, Willie Fritz comes in. He brings like his whole Tulane team with him. Mm -hmm. So like you're you're taking on a much like they're going to look way better than Houston did last year, just by the fact that everyone's been with him in new Orleans when they were really good. And then, and then uh, Cincinnati, like a team that really sucked last year, that was Satterfield's first year. I, I fully expect them to be better this year. So it then you're trying to break these down and you're like, and then you add in Arizona, who was like, what a, a 10 or 11 win team a year ago, right. Arizona state, which I, th th to me is the, the one team that I think has to prove it to me that they will be better Yeah, because they were so young last year. But I do think Colorado was better. And then Utah is like a juggernaut. So it's like, I know you, I know we would probably favor Utah, but I think this conference is fucking awesome. Oh, like it, every game well, is like a yeah. 50, 50 game. I know it's kind of like the way basketball was this year for a big 12. I mean, they were all loaded. Uh, Utah, of course, is your favorite. Both Kansas teams though are dangerous. Kansas state, of course. Um, but I, I really like this Kansas squad. Um, but the, here's the thing though. Kansas is wor there's, it's tricky to me because you know they're playing a lot of games at Arrowhead because they're they're renovating their stadium. Mm, yeah, that's true. So does that hurt them? Like if you're playing, I mean, I I because that's in Kansas City, Missouri. You're 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 crossing state lines there, <laughs> Sullivan. All right. Uh, and they let you know too. They let you know what side you're on. <laughs> Sorry, kids. But I trust in Leopold. Just I, that's what he's done with this program. Well, I think this is an explosive year. I mean, I, and the fact that it's the what's his face is coming back is unbelievable. How many what yeah. fuck Jalen Daniels? Jesus yeah. Christ. How many years has he got? Dude, they have to me the most you go through like, this is why there's so much value in this conference. I got no fucking idea. Like I like Kansas too. I've been riding Kansas for three, you know, people that know that have listened to me over the years. Mm -hmm. I've been riding Lance Leipold since he was at Buffalo. Um, the overs hit every year with the guy, but dude, all those games are like 50, 50 games to me. Like for yeah. any team, any team in the whole fucking conference, you pull up TCU. You're like, I don't know. Like right now I'm looking at Kansas schedule and you're like, Kansas is at West Virginia in the season opener. Okay. I mean that to me, I, I could, that could go either way. Then they're home to TCU. I guess I would give Kansas slight, slight favor at Arizona state. I think I would give Kansas slight favor home to Houston slight favor at Kansas state. I would give Kansas state slight favor. And then like home to Iowa state, I think is kind of a wash 
at BYU. I got no fucking idea. Home to Colorado. What will oh. Colorado look like there? I guess. And it's in Arrowhead, so it's not on campus. Does that help the Buffs? At Baylor, I got no idea how the fuck Baylor's going to look this year. Two years ago, they looked like what? Or was it three years ago? They looked like what? They go like twelve and one, twelve and two. This is the hardest conference to project, but that's why I feel like there's so much value in. I'll be honest, like I do like Kansas' schedule. I do like Utah's schedule. I'll be honest, I I think Colorado's conference schedule is nice. I think Colorado's conference schedule is is manageable. It they 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 do get Utah, but they get Utah in Boulder. I mean, <laughs> Utah's gonna smash Colorado. What, you, what the fuck are we talking about here? And you're talking, you don't know about BYU. BYU, BYU is the worst team in this conference, right? Or Houston no. is. I think right now Arizona State is, but we don't know. Maybe I mean that they, they, they should be a lot better this year. I think Houston is actually going to be good this year. I think Houston will come in because because they hired Fritz, who's a proven winner everywhere he's been. Yeah. I I think the ones that need to prove it to me are, are Cincinnati. Arizona State. I think BYU is a, a, a notch higher. Am I crazy? I mean, here you're talking about the slop down below there. Uh, the numbers that BYU has, has the less chance to win, but that doesn't mean they're the worst team though, just because they have the least chance to win the conference. Um, David said Arizona is one of the Big Twelve best QB wide receiver combo in the league. I mean, like we said, we can, you can make an argument for half the teams in this conference and Arizona is definitely one of them for sure. Well, um, look, 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 I mean, UCF, I think will be better in this, but the odds. So Utah is plus three fifty, K state plus three fifty, Kansas plus 700, Arizona plus 800. They are mm-hmm. breaking in a brand new head coach and Brad Brennan, uh, Texas tech plus nine fifty, Iowa state plus 1100 UCF plus 1200. OK, state plus their Oakland, but Gundy goes to the championship every fucking year plus yeah. thirteen hundred. Uh, TCU plus seven. They were in the national championship fourteen months ago plus seventeen hundred. West Virginia plus two thousand. Colorado plus thirty five hundred. Uh, Baylor plus six thousand. Cincy plus seven thousand. Arizona State uh, plus ten thousand. Houston plus eleven thousand. BYU plus twelve. So they are saying BYU is the worst. DK is. I don't yeah. know that I buy into that. Well, I but, think like like I said, that, that doesn't mean they're the worst team in the conference just because they have the least chance to win the conference. Like you said, a lot of it's scheduling, a lot of it's I mean, who knows if they go on a mission halfway through the season, they gotta go on a pilgrimage to Africa, those Mormons, you know, and uh, <laughs> do whatever it is they fucking do and clean up their act. But no, I mean seriously, I think it's uh Arizona is not a bad call in there. Um and like you said, I mean it's you know, Oklahoma State, you know they're gonna be there at the end of the day. Why not take them at thirteen to one? I mean, my problem with Arizona is their road games. They got to go to Utah. They got to go to BYU. So are hard places to win. They got to go to UCF, mm. like at TCU. I feel like those are all hard venues to win at. But I guess the the the, the whole fucking league is tough. Uh, how do we I, how do we like Jalen Daniels fifty to one right now? I'm looking at for Heisman. I like it, but I you know I had that last year and the and the and the, the stinking bum got injured. He I, always I gets love injured. Him. That's the problem. He well, they run him so injured. much in Leipold's offense. You have to run so much, so yeah, it's yeah, tricky. Right. But I still think it's worth a sprinkle because I do think he's a he's a fucking amazing quarterback when he's absolutely. On. He could be uh you know this year's uh, what's his face from LSU, Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Guy. What about man? I don't know. Let me see Oklahoma State's because the odds are so good. Oklahoma State's away games are at Kansas State, at BYU, at Baylor, at TCU, at Colorado. They got five away games. Hmm. I mean, it's worth, I think it's worth a sprinkle for Oklahoma State just because they do it every year. Right. Like they find a way to get to the Big 12 championship. They they don't always win it. And that's all you need. That's all you can ask for. Right. Plus 1,300 for get me there. OK State. I mean, you, 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 I know uh, uh, people will laugh at this, but I even think Colorado's like road schedule is it, it breaks nice for them to me. Somewhat, somewhat (laughs) like at, at UCF at Arizona at Texas tech at Kansas, but Kansas is in that NFL stadium. Who's this Colorado? Yeah. They only have four away games. Well, what do you think of Colorado's team in general? I mean, they gotta be better than last year, right? I mean, do they? I don't know. Do do they have to be better? I don't know. They have like the the top ten re, uh, transfer portal class coming in. All right. The, the, well, just remember last year though they started a lot of young. Like Cormani McLean, the number one recruit was a freshman. 
So he'll be a sophomore this year. Just by That's just true. by that, just by Travis Hunter being a year older, yeah. just by Shador Sanders being a year older, Dylan Edwards, their running back, is a year older. But I mean, look, I'm not saying they, they might end up four and eight again. I'm just saying, like, I think Colorado's schedule was much harder last year than this year's. If okay. that makes sense. That does. And to me, the thing you like is you now, I guess it depends what you think of Baylor, but I, I like their the fact you're getting your the best teams on your schedule, you're getting them in Boulder. To me. You're getting Kansas State and Utah in Boulder. Now you still gotta win those games. And it's probably highly unlikely that they beat Utah. Maybe K State. And you're getting they Oklahoma might, State and Boulder. I mean, they might get one of them. You make a good point. They do upset teams at home. It's a tough place to play, and regardless, you know. Um, so if you if you're gonna play those two teams, you got you want to get them in Boulder. So and you know, Coach Prime's got magic. What about Kansas Kansas State? Who are we kidding? Kansas State's got the best schedule, right? Yeah, of course. And that's why they're the second favorite to win right behind Utah. And uh they're a force. They don't play Utah. That's why. But yeah, I mean. I'm looking That's for I mean. value for us though. For value for us in the Big Twelve, I think it's OK State, Iowa State. How about how young they were a year ago? Mm-hmm. Plus eleven hundred on the Cyclones. Remember, they lost all those people to the gambling probe. Uh, so they they ended up starting uh, Tony Meatball's son Rocco Beck as a freshman. Rocco Beck. Jesus. They went seven and six last year. Right, but their losses, one of their lo- two of their losses were Oklahoma and Texas. <laughs> so, and the other two losses were when they had 40 players suspended. So, it's not that crazy to think that they couldn't have a uh, big year in the, in the Big 12 this year. I know I'm making a case for every fucking team. I'm I spr- know. That's what we we just said that's yeah. what we're going to do. Talk about every single goddamn team in this conference. I'm, I'm sprinkling <laughs> Oklahoma State. All right, but we're definitely sprinkling Oklahoma State. I like the cyclone choice. I'd rather go over a deeper number if we're going to go with this conference. I, I like what you say about TCU. Why not a twenty to twenty to one, twenty to one or something like that? Uh, no, I like your. Team. I'm going to go Kansas, Oklahoma State. If we go long shot, yeah. I mean, TCU wasn't. They were in the national right. championship what fourteen months ago. I know. Now Kansas, I like Kansas is my team to come out of here. Oklahoma State's for value, and if I want to sprinkle a deeper dart, I will go TCU. But now, I like now you State. do know historically. I feel like every three years Baylor finds up, they end up in the Big 12 championship. So plus 6,000 on Baylor. And and every year that they go to the Big 12 championship coming in, you go, this team's not any good. <laughs> right. It's pretty much how that happens. You're just like, I remember previewing it. I was like, yeah, they're going to fire Dave Aranda. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, uh, he's, he's, his team's a mess. Oh, 10 and 2 when they play in the Big 12 championship. Worth a sprinkle. Worth a sprinkle. All right, let's move on to that, uh, you know, that SEC. All right, let's move on to that Southeast Conference. Uh, Georgia plus one ninety, take it. Texas plus three twenty. They do play, I believe, in Austin. Uh, Ole Miss plus six hundred. Alabama plus nine hundred. Roll Tide. LSU plus nine fifty. Tennessee plus eleven hundred. Missouri plus fourteen hundred. Uh, I think my man in the chat had the the worst of the Missouri number. A <laughs> uh, and M plus two thousand, Oklahoma plus four thousand, Auburn plus six thousand, uh, K- Kentucky and South Carolina plus ten thousand, Florida plus twenty thousand, Arkansas plus twenty thousand, Mississippi State plus thirty thousand, and uh, Vandy plus a hundred thousand. Um, I mean, why do I feel like this? If there was going to be one, I think it would be LSU, right? Like, it, I, obviously, to me, it's Georgia and Texas. Will be the top two teams, right? I, I but think that's, we're not here. To, we're not here to give out Georgia and Texas. Yeah, I think LSU for the, for the nice. just, the Missouri one is not a horrible play. Mm-hmm. We had the chat talking about it a minute ago. It's not a terrible play just because they return a lot and they have their like for, as far as like NIL collective. They ha- they they bring in the running back from App State who's a stud. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. They return, uh, you know, Luther Burden, who's a, a star, maybe the best receiver in the nation. So in that regard, you got to sit there and say, okay, well, you know, they were a very good team a year ago. Now, uh, let me quickly pull up their schedule because I think they avoid Georgia also. Hmm. I Would think, you, Ms., yes, they, they do avoid. So Georgia and Texas play one another, which is great because, and Georgia plays Bama. 
So you're going to have that going. Uh, Missouri doesn't, where the fuck is their schedule? The Missouri Tigers actually dude, this is the year to do it. I think so their sec schedule home to Vanderbilt by week, then at Texas A and M. Then they have another bye week because UMass is on the schedule. Then they're home to Auburn. Then at Alabama. Bye week, home to Oklahoma. Then at South Carolina, at mm. Mississippi State, home to Arkansas. This is the play. This is the best schedule in the SEC. This is the best schedule because look, you get now you have to go to Alabama, right? But what is Alabama going to be this year? I know they're still be good, but it's like no, they're a huge downgrade for Alabama. That's what I'm saying. So like. What is your other tough road game at A and M? But you're getting, you're getting both those new coaches early in the year. Yeah, uh, although they're my second sleeper in this conference. I like A and M. I they? do 20, too. Did uh, you say I, twenty to one, twenty five to one? Yeah, I, I already have a future on A and M. But I, I'll tell you this: I think Missouri and A and M are the two angles you take. Yeah, you got Mike Elko coaching there, Wegman a quarterback. I mean, they're. Who are the worst teams that who are the teams you want on your schedule in the sec? You want Vanderbilt. You want Arkansas. You want Mississippi state, right? All of them, even South Carolina. You probably want all All four on their schedule. So you got to love that. A and M's another one. A and M's road schedule in conference at Florida. We don't think Florida is very good. They won five games last year at Mississippi state. They're breaking in a brand new head coach at South Carolina, tough place to play, but they're not a great team. They lose Spencer Rattler and then at Auburn. So they can even lose that. Hmm. If they take care of business at home, it's a favorable schedule. I think that's what we do. I think we take Mizzou. I think we take A and M. There it is. I love it. Uh, LSU's A&M, odds are not yeah. bad though. A and M schedule too. Not that not that tough at all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like A and M's A and M's is very favorable. They start to off me, with that Notre Dame game. We're gonna fuck those Irish up. I, I like them to beat him because that's yeah. Elko going up against his former quarterback. Absolutely. So he's going to know the weaknesses. Now, Texas A&M to make the playoffs folks plus 200. Whew. I, I think there's, there's some value in that. Um, Look at this guy. That's Notre Dame McNeese to go to the swamp. We, I mean, we know Florida's a mid a mid team. Then five got, and seven last Holmes, year. Florida was. Yeah. yeah. Then you got home versus Bowling Green, Arkansas, Mizzou. And then they wrap up at Mississippi state. I mean, what, what's going on? What's the, no, let's see here. How, what goes, what's past that? Missouri's plus 175 to make the playoffs as well. You know, if, if you make the SEC championship game, you're in the, you're in the playoffs. Mm. So I like that. I like that shot, man. Right. For sure. That's just so, a mid schedule. But like at that point, you have that ticket in your hand. No, they should be undefeated by us that after they play uh, Mississippi state. I think they look at I, I, that Texas game. They can ruin Texas's season. Potentially mm-hmm. imagine if Texas loses to Georgia, right. And, yeah. or, or Michigan, right. And then the final game of the season, they can, that game has, you know, I miss that game in college football. That's one of the best things about this year is we're going to get that game back. That's um, true. But uh, right. sh- sh- Shout out to Nathan in the chat. He goes, I got fired from the mines today. Back to being a DJ and gambler. Well, so hey, hey Nathan. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's, you never know what's around your next corner, but brother. So uh, yeah, one black lung closes, one uh, window opens up. <laughs> open up that betting window. That's what that's. That's what God's telling you. Open up an incognito window to the soul. Um, yeah, the mines. That's 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 a job that's got no future. Betting on college football feet. Now that's got futures. Val, you're yeah, we're, we're talking about these futures right yeah, now. All right. Yeah, the only future you need is a Texas A and M future. All right, Nathan. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear you got fired though, man. So but obviously started here from but yeah. like you said, move on to uh Buter, beautiful, beauter. I was gonna say better. <laughs> I combined better and beautiful right there. Beauter things. Come on uh, over. Are, are you are Come you speaking beauter things? Are you speaking Arkansas? <laughs> I am um, I'm thinking full on. I'm, I, I, I talked to the team. There was no team. And you know what? I'm jacked about another opportunity. <laughs> let's go. Like, I'm like, let's go. Now, I met with the team. There is no team. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, man. Uh, John Calipari. <laughs> That fucking slickster is getting his getting he's greasing right on <laughs> he's greasing those pigs right in. Grease them hogs up, Calipari. All right. So the in the SEC, you're taking 
plus fourteen hundred on Mizzou right now on DK. Yeah, A and M's plus two thousand. Those are the two. Circle them. Write them down. Take a picture. Whatever. Um, I I uh, let's talk na- uh, to make the playoff. But before I do that, I want to tell you that the college. Uh, football experience. I almost said basketball It's brought to you by AVO. We're proud to partner with AVO, the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. If you're new to arbitrage sports betting, it's very simple. Basically betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in a profit and arbitrage is AVO t- tool uh, scan. I'm sorry. AVO's arbitrage tool scans the sports books, looking for discrepancies in the odds, and then tells you how much money you need to place with each sports book and, ex- and to, to, to expect a profit actually. So, and, and the tool is super easy to, to, to use. It's lightning fast as obviously it needs to be big part of uh, arbitrage sports betting is speed. The best part is AVO is uh, currently free to use without any restrictions. That's right. Completely free. Get started today at arbs versus odds.com. Uh, that's a R B S versus odds.com. Mm. All right. We are back on the college football experience. And just before we get out of here, or I guess we got to probably got to roll right now, but I want to just J March can Nancy. I'll just say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, he is What about to win the national championship, Ohio state. Is plus four twenty five. I think that is worth a sprinkle. Um, I, when I think about rosters, I think Georgia and Ohio State are on another tier than every other team. Maybe you throw Texas in there, right. right? Everyone else is on another tier right now to me. So like you can get. I mean, maybe the Texas one. I guess ain't that bad. Plus seven fifty. Uh. Mm. I don't know. I think I'm just, I'm going to sit back with Ohio state plus four twenty five. chip Kelly is an offensive coordinator. Now he fucking was phenomenal as an OC back in the day at the, with the Oregon ducks. So uh, yeah. Uh, if I wanted to take a long shot, a and M's plus 3,500. Mm-hmm. I don't mind them. They have the, they have the talent. If we just said they're going to be in the playoff, right? You get that's half the battle. Um, Trying to Missouri's plus three thousand. Um, How about like my Kansas, my Kansas Jayhawks are two two hundred to one. I don't know if they have the defense to do it yet. I think they could have a really good season. I think they could win the Big Twelve. I don't think they have the defense to win the national championship. But we just got to get them in there. That's all we're gonna need to do. Get them in that playoff. Oh, okay. That's just because I was I was quoting national championship odds. No, um, no, I know. No, I okay. mean, in order to have it, in order to have a sweat, in order to hedge, oh, do whatever to, you want. To, yeah, to, I mean, to, okay. Yeah, sure. I got you. I got. How about you. Utah, seventy-five to one. That's interesting because Cam Rising's seventy-three years old. That's what I mean, Cam Rising's back. I don't mind tossing him in there for Heisman as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, know? anytime you can get a quarterback twenty-eight years old, started over three hundred college football games. Yeah, it's worth a shot. It's worth a shot. Um. Yeah, I think that's our play. That's well, our like play. It. That's actually a good new national championship. I like that a lot. Utah seventy five to one. Let me pop that in right now. Let's go, uh, folks. Give CJ Sullivan a follow on Twitter at CJ Sullivan underscore. Check out the Bottom Line Bombs podcast. And uh, we're just getting started with college football here, so you know, buckle up. We're doing a lot of episodes on college football, as obviously it's easy to see a tide turn. Um, when you know college basketball ends is what we do every year. We got college baseball, Frozen Four action going on right now, but college football, you know, it's, it's the it's the bell cow of this program. Uh, so uh, give me a follow on Twitter at the Colby D, and uh, yeah, check out the Sports Gambling Podcast. Check out the UFL Gambling Podcast coming up next. All right. Uh, if you're on YouTube, I've already done all the work for you. It's gonna seamlessly transition right into that. All right. Woo! So (laughs) until next time, this is the college football experience. You better start thinking about yours. And we are out of here. Ha, 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 ha.